Find your daily fix of women's mixed martial arts from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. Be in the loop because Golden State Media Concepts got you covered. Get your fix in women's MMA with Got You Covered on Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. I'm your host, Tate, and I have somebody else with me as well. Who do I have with me? I'm your co-host, Sarah. We have Sarah with me today. How are you doing tonight, Tate? I'm doing good. Good. So, we had a pretty fun weekend of fights this weekend. Uh, we did. We had Invicta 22. And I got to say, spectacular card. Um, it seems like Invicta is like show after show is getting better and better and better. Uh, what did you think of the card so far? I thought it was a great card. You initially had some doubts about this card, right? Well, I thought it was I, I was kind of thinking it was going to be a little top heavy. So I was I was thinking like. You know, I wasn't. I don't know how what I was kind of expecting out of the undercards, the, and I knew the co-main event and the main event would be really, you know, spectacular fights. But I wasn't really that sure about, you know, the early fights. And then when we started watching weigh-ins, and some of the, you know, we lost a, a couple of fights here and there. Some people didn't make weight. I definitely did have my doubts. So, you know, did it, when you started seeing some of the weigh-ins, did it, did it kind of make you a little leery as, as well? It just seemed like the, the lineup kept changing a lot. And I don't know if that was just my perception of it or if it's, I mean, it seemed like from when we first started looking at the, the lineup to the actual fight time when it started, it seemed like there were a lot of changes. And maybe there weren't as many as, as as I think, but it felt like there were a lot. Now, I can understand where you're coming from with that, but just because, you know, fights were scheduled as, you know, as, you know, the straw weight. It was going to be kind of a card featuring a lot of the straw weights, but then it kind of changed because of a few fights being, you know, at catch weights. Uh, fights got canceled. So it just kind of threw things. Initially, I thought it was going to throw things off. But, man, I was definitely wrong. That fight, I mean, that card in general, I don't think there was a boring fight from start to finish. I mean, that fight, uh, the card just kept me engaged. Uh, I thought it I may even be the best Invicta event I'd seen uh, maybe ever. The la Matter of fact, I would go as far as to say the last two Invicta events – have just been, uh, you know, just have really kicked it up a lot. So you want to take a, talk about the fights now? You want to talk? You, wow, you're ready to jump into this right away. Well, no, I mean, if you, we, we don't have to. We can make some more small talk. <laughs> what do you want to small talk about? Then? I, don't, I don't know. How was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> My weekend consisted of just watching fights. And I also played around with... Uh, I had ordered this uh, this new box called uh, the Tick Box, and so I kind of played around with that a lot. It's like a little box that'll give you the be a, give you the ability to watch almost any television program anywhere in the world. So I'm a huge, huge fanatic when it comes to watching BBC and Australian television. Really, which is you know kind of a weird thing. But um, so I ended up getting the tick box and I was playing around with that. So I spent uh, most of Saturday during the day working on that all the way up to it came time to watch Invicta. So uh, that was a big part of my my day. And then Sunday, 
was more playing around with the tick box and figuring out how to work it and watching videos and finding all these crazy stuff that I wouldn't be able to watch without, you know, watching, uh, without, you know, because I don't have, you know, all the BBC channels or all the Australian channels. So that's so, kind of what I did. So Invicta and Australian TV, that was pretty much your weekend. That sounds like a freaking awesome combination. All right. Okay, so we're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we're going to we're going to dive right into that Invicta 22 event where where Tanya Evinger came back and uh, established that she never left. Uh, her fight against uh, Yana Kuniskaya. So when we come back, we'll talk about that. We'll talk on some other Invicta news that was announced right before uh, Invicta FC dealing with Cyborg or Chris Cyborg. Stay tuned, hang in there, and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC smcpodcast.com for more info. Right, we're back, and you are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. And what are we going to cover first? So the first thing we're going to talk about is that main event, and that was Tanya Evinger versus Yana Kuniskaya, take two. Because, of course, uh, the first time it was contested, and um, Tanya ended up getting her title back. So... Round two to see if it was a fluke, if it was meant to be, if what, you know. So what did you think of that fight? Okay, before we start, the first victory, this this was, you know, one of those situations where Tanya was, had the title re taken from her because of referee interference. Uh, she had her foot on, the, on uh, Yana's head. And the referee made her move, which move, made her move into back into position. And he said that that wasn't allowed, but that's not the case, right? No, it was totally legal. It was um, you are allowed to step on someone's head. You just could not make it a blow. So if she would have tried stomping on her head or kicking her in the head while she was down, then it would have been an illegal uh, move. But the referee actually moved her, actually made her move. Which then made her move into step. Once you stepped over the head, it made it so that that arm bar kind of locked in. Tanya tapped, and it was a it was a quick night uh, in which she had lost the title. But the big victory is when you appeal a decision, a referee's decision, it is never ever overturned. I've never seen it overturned, and so that was the first win of the of this, you know fight was the fact that Tanya actually earned, you know, a no contest in which she got her title back. That was a huge victory. And I think, and that's what kind of started the, the kind of the rivalry between uh, Yana and Tanya, because a lot of people give Tanya a bad name and they talk about how, you know, she's this, you know, she kind of has a, a kind of bad mouth or, you know, but, Tanya was nothing but the consummate professional when she lost, even though she thought, you know, she had gotten ripped off. She kept things on a, a very high note by just congratulating her and, you know, shaking her hand and moved on. It didn't get ugly uh, between those two 
until once the decision was made, and then you start seeing a few things on on uh, Twitter where Yana wasn't happy about it. And, and and you know what? I can I can defend Yana by saying I understand. She's she's done the impossible. She's come over to her first trip to the United States, and she's fighting arguably one of the greatest. And I will repeat that again: one of the greatest. Uh, Bantam white fighters in history. And there's a lot of fans who will listen to, who watches UFC and listen to this show will say, what, what are you talking about? I'm saying just that. Tanya Evinger is one of the true greats of all time. As a matter of fact, I put her, as far as the Bantam weight division goes, she's one of the top three of all time. And I, I'm saying that, especially after her, overcoming this situation but i i and we'll talk about that a little later on but you know once this so you go into this event and you go into the weigh-in and you can kind of tell how as uh as the fight is building the, the day before how it's starting to come out how there's a bit of a rivalry and and then and you listen to the interview and and uh yana is like She's just not a nice person. I think what she said was she's a horrible person. A ho was it well, a horrible the, person? I, well, the, that was what, how it was translated. No, no <laughs> she, was, she was speaking English. She used the word yeah. horrible. She yeah. Was, so she's a yeah. horrible person. She is a horrible person. <laughs> and you know what? If you if you don't follow Tanya, you mean you can miss you can you can. Uh, I see how people could get that wrong impression on Tanya. But when you really, if you follow Tanya's career and you listen to Tanya, uh, I think Tanya has been always open to fighting whomever, whenever. And I thought, I think she always kind of, she shows a lot of respect to fighters, but she has a lot of confidence in herself. And when you look at a career that she's had, she's she's earned that confidence you know she started out kind of rough when she first started her career with a few different losses but you know over the last 10 years i will put her you you, you i'll put her up against anyone in that bantamweight division there's no one that i'm going to tell you just say they're going to blow tanya out or they that tanya can't compete with them tanya can compete with any bantamweight in the UFC, in Bellator, any, I don't care where they're at, uh, the, she can compete with any women's uh, Bantamweight fighter on the roster, past or present. Uh, that's just my my opinion. So, let's get to the fight. That fight was awesome. First, you know, it was a lot, I mean, Tanya coming to the ring, I was super excited about that. She seemed super calm and ready to go. What was your take when you started when you started watching the fight? It was fascinating to watch them first of all come into the ring, especially Yana. Yana has almost zero expression when she comes into the ring. She is I think one of the commentators said something about her just being like ice you know just her face is impassive people were booing her and she came in and it, it was like she could have been alone in that room in that octagon she just was completely impassive and then like you said tanya came in she seemed calm she seemed ready so just watching them come in the two of them both seemed like they were ready and read just ready to go at it you know i listened to an interview after uh after the fight and I listened to Tanya talk about how she was the most relaxed she had been for any of her fights. Uh, she wasn't stressed out or she wasn't uh, worried at all. She didn't feel like she had lost the title. Uh, more or less, like she felt like, you know, when a lot of times when you're sparring at the gym, you know, someone will put you in an arm bar or something, you just kind of tap out. But, you know, it's not really real. And, uh, kind of that's the way Tanya felt uh, in her interview. She was talking about that, and she was just saying, like, you know, after watching Yana and actually being in the ring with her, she didn't think Yana had a shot, where she didn't think uh, Yana could knock her out, and she knew Yana couldn't handle her on, on the ground. And she kind of fought just that way. When that fight, when the fight started, Tanya took her to the ground, 
pretty early, and she took her to uh, and she kept her to the, she kept kept her to the ground, working a lot of ground and pound, uh, just trying to keep you know keeping the fight under control. The thing about this fight that I thought was amazing is I think you were gonna you're gonna say what I was just gonna say. I'll yeah. well, no then I'll let you say it then. Well, about Yana and I was really impressed with her ground game. I mean, I expected, you know, they talk about her striking ability, but the fact that, what, 90% of this fight, it seems like, took place on the ground, and she completely held her own. She held, she, you know what, I mean, I think Tanya is one of the best wrestlers in women's, uh, women's uh, mixed martial arts, and and Yana held her, held her own. A couple of times, I was I was really worried that Tanya was in trouble. Uh, I she had her, you know, she faced the arm uh, the arm bar attempt. She faced a toe hook. I mean, a, a toe lock. I mean, she she tried submit. Anna tried submission after submission after submission. Um, the one thing I'll tell you about Tanya that is, she was one calm cool customer in that ring and yet after the fight she said a couple of times that she felt like she didn't do well like she could have done a lot better like she i think she even said she she fought like crap didn't she yeah she i don't think she was happy with her performance as as a whole i i and uh the situation is is that i i once again on another interview she talked about how she traditionally keeps a very, very uh, strict diet right before the fight. And she went out with some friends and they decided to go to get Mexican food and she didn't want to eat anything. But they told her, you know, just eat some eat some beans or eat the rice and beans. It's, uh, you know, you need to keep your carbs up anyway. And she ate the rice and beans and I guess it came back to uh, bite her in the butt a little bit. <laughs> No, Hopefully no pun intended. not literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she was, uh, from everything I understand, she was a little under the weather. Okay. But it didn't matter. When she was in that ring and Yana was putting on the arm bar and then uh, she tried so many different submissions. It was hard to keep up with how many submissions. I'd never seen anyone to attempt so many submission uh, holds. And most people, when they get in a submission uh, hold, they kind of panic or they stop their game plan and they instantly just kind of freak out and try like crazy to get out of it. Tanya was calm. Uh, like at no point, even though I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, this is locked. This, uh, it's locked in there tight. Tanya was just cool and calm. And I mean, did you did you see that as well? I did. I think she. I I feel like they both were. Um, it was it was like watching. I, I can't even I can't even come up with a good metaphor off the top of my head. But it just seemed like they were both really focused, really calm, really in the moment. Um, there wasn't a lot of. Um, sort of those panic moves where you're trying to you know like you yes. said you're kind of freaking out no they just seemed like they were they were calculating what they were doing figuring out what they should do in response to what the the other fighter was doing yeah no i thought uh i thought they both handled themselves really well uh tanya's wrestling game is just you know just phenomenal she can make a fight dirty and and that's that's been her game plan I don't. I have yet to see anyone stop her from making that fight dirty, but she took that. She she took her down. The ground and pound was 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 there, and then Tanya eventually takes her back, puts in the rear naked choke, and honest tapping. And I mean, but it was it was a really impressive fight. It, it was a lot of people who say. Tanya's not fun to watch. Watch this fight. Tanya's a lot of fun to watch. I don't understand why someone would even say that Tanya's not fun because I, I think her fights are some of the most intriguing fights uh, you can find on the Invicta rosters. No, she doesn't go in uh, guns a blazing like Ronda Rousey or Chris Cyborg. She's different than those guys. As a matter of fact, there's no one, I don't know anyone that actually fights quite like Tanya. 
she's found a, a, a special niche that makes her different. Uh, and, you know, no one's been able to stop her for almost a decade. I mean, she's just been, she's been, she's been rolling strong. And I so I was super impressed. I think this fight might have even helped her a little bit. I mean, I, I, I don't think she's a boring fighter. I've never thought she was a boring fighter. But I think that the fact that it was contested, she did get her title back. Um, that what Absolutely. That, that Yana had it for what thirteen days, and then the decision was um, over overturned, and she got it back. I think that made her um, more popular a little bit. With I, mean, I the, agree, just the fact that people were booing Yana when she came in, they were chanting Tanya's name. Um, you don't get that a lot with Tanya, but you, you really do. saw it in this fight. No, you don't. This was it was kind of like uh, addition by subtraction because. No one said there'd be math. <laughs> uh, because of the fact that Tanya was, in my opinion, and, you know, in the Athletic Commission's opinion, was wrongfully, she wrongfully lost her title and it was given back. I feel like she gained more fans. I think people started to realize, like, wait a minute, uh... Who is this Tanya Evinger uh, fighter? Why is so many people upset about Tanya losing? Why is it a big deal? I think she gained a lot more fighters. And I I also think because of the loss and because of the, the increased interest in this fight, it may open a door for her to finally fight in the UFC. And you I would love that you have been campaigning for that <laughs> forever. I have been campaigning for Tanya Evinger to be in the UFC for a long time. And 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 I remember when Ronda was coming back and they were talking about Ronda should take a tune up fight. And they said, you know, some people mentioned Tanya Evinger as Ronda's tune up fight. Oh dear. And I was like, Don't you dare. I'm like, if you I think people would have been really shocked because I think Tanya can compete with anyone. And I'm saying Ronda, I'm saying Amanda Nunez and, and no disrespect to those guys, because I think those guys, I mean, I'm a huge fan of both. I think they're great, but I don't think, I think, um, I think uh, Tanya can compete with any of them. And I'm not saying she'll win or she'll, I, I don't know. I, I would have to dive into and look into it a little bit deeper, but she has just as good a chance of beating the top people uh, in the UFC than I mean. I give her a better chance than than almost anyone else of uh, with when you're starting to take on some of the, the top fighters in the UFC. And on that note, you know, you said it maybe it'll open the door. It doesn't sound from what Tanya said at, at the post fight interview in in the octagon that she's thinking that way i mean i can't you know i don't know her and i can't read her mind but she did say you know um the the woman asked what's next and she said well a couple more fights and then you know it kind of sounded like she was leaning a little bit toward retirement do you think that's the case or was she i, I don't know i don't know quite what to make of her comments you know i i get the same uh feeling that I, and i was i was definitely uh hanging on every word but you know sometimes you say things or you're about to say things in the heat of the moment right after a fight because when I started listening to uh, some of the other interviews afterwards uh, Tanya was not talking or thinking about retiring whatsoever she was you know she wasn't she was just saying she doesn't care who she fights next she's willing to fight anybody um I would have liked to have seen her make another case for the fighting someone in the UFC. I would really, really uh, would have would have loved to see her call somebody out, kind of the way Megan Anderson called out for the winner of Jermaine, Dur Jermaine Duranamy and Holly Holm. Um, I thought that was the, the way to go. But Tanya... It's been so respectful and uh, to Invicta that you know she's she's stayed very close to the vest. 
So uh, is there anything else about this fight you want to talk about or cover before? I think we covered pretty much most most of what I had to cover. All pretty right. much all of what I had to cover. Not much. <laughs> I mean, um, once again, and uh, just an amazing, uh, uh, amazing fight. I hung on every second of it. Uh, but there was a little bit of news right before this fight. Uh, do you want to talk about what that was? Sure. So the news uh, was about Chris Cyborg, who has said that she is now vacating that Invicta title. So that moved um, Megan Anderson from interim champ to the – oh, I just blanked on the phrase. She's not the interim champ. Now she's the, the – Undisputed she's the champion. Undisputed. Thank you. The undisputed champ. So Chris Cyborg is vacating her title, and she has called out – Jermaine Duranamy for a fight. What do you think about that possibility? Well, that was, I mean, it was, it's a ma it was just a, a matter of time before she was going to vacate that, uh, the Invicta title anyway. Uh, Invicta's in a great place because they all, they're, they had an interim champion who is just amazing. And Megan Anderson, the only problem with Megan Anderson is, is that she is going to? Get, I think she's going to get called up to the UFC very, very soon. But she's another one you've been campaigning for, so that should make you happy, right? Oh, absolutely! It's kind of a double-edged sword because my, I, I make no bones about it. My two favorite Invicta fighters, and I am I love the Invicta roster as a whole. But I look at Megan and I say, Megan is the future of the featherweight division and i look at tanya evinger as as the champ or the contender who hasn't had a fair shot yet who deserves a shot to show that she is one of uh the one of the best fighters in all of uh the bantamweight division so megan anderson and tanya evinger i am all on board, both of them coming to the UFC because I think they can compete with anyone on the roster. So, but back to Chris Cyborg. Uh, the minute that the whole situation that she got cleared and, and got that exemption uh, from USADA, I knew she was going to make a move for that, uh, for that title. Because, uh, I, I mean, the title was created for her. And then the USADA situation happened, and she couldn't really, uh, you know, fight for the initial title. So what do you think about that USADA decision? Because new podcast, we haven't talked about that, obviously, since we can't go back in time and create a podcast to talk about that. What What do you think about that decision? I don't want you to ask me that question. I take it back then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's... I, you know... I, I I I love Chris Cyborg. I just wasn't a big fan of them making that exemption uh, for her. It feels like a slippery slope. It's that's exactly where where is that line going to be drawn at? Right. Uh, you know, and so it's it's a very touchy one, and I I I think it's it could it could, it. What's so everyone's going to get the same exemption? I think it's either all or nothing, and I think it was definitely a very slippery, slippery slope. So you know, as a whole, wasn't a big fan of it. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, you seem very uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I was so tiptoeing around that conversation. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I'm like, oh no, you didn't just ask me that question. Uh, now, as far as you're putting Jermaine, Dur Jermaine Duranamy, one of the most decorated fighters as far as Muay Thai and uh, outside of mixed martial arts in history against Chris Cyborg. I'm looking forward to this fight. I cannot wait. Uh, I don't think they've announced a date yet, have they? Well, they haven't, and they and Duranami had stated after her last fight with Holly Holm that you know she did injure her hand, and so she was waiting to see if she had to have surgery. So I think that may be a factor 
I'm not sure if she's yes. announced one way or the other about her hand, but obviously if she's going to have surgery, she's that fight would have to be postponed. It, the question is, I the question I have, I I look at that division as a, there's a three way dance there. If you if you mix in Holly, there's there's four way, but it's Megan Anderson, Chris Cyborg, Jermaine, Jermaine Duranami. If Jermaine actually goes through, if if the surgery holds her up. And she can't fight a while. Will Cyborg just wait on the sidelines and not fight? Or will Cyborg fight Megan or will she fight Holly Holm? Uh, both of those would be very dangerous fights right when you have, you know, the, you know, a title shot sitting there. So I don't quite know what's going to happen there. I do like the fact that with Megan uh getting the Invicta title outright it makes it so Megan can get a couple more fights because I, I don't quite think Megan is quite ready for uh Chris Cyborg right now but she's gonna be and I think she needs about two to three more fights and with everything the way the way things are looking where if they wait and have a Jermaine Duranamy Chris Cyborg fight that gives Megan that total opportunity to get in two to three more fight so that she's ready and that would be a blockbuster fight as far as who do i think will win between cyborg and jermaine geranami i think the only fighter in the ufc that is built to give chris cyborg trouble was jermaine followed by holly but i still would i'm not bet i would not put a penny against uh against Chris Cyborg. I'm take I would take Cyborg to win against uh either one. All right. You know what? I think we should take a break. I think you're right. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to talk about a few of the other fights that were on that on the on the Invicta uh 22 uh card. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Okay, and we're back, and we were just talking about the Tanya Evinger versus Yana Kuniskaya uh, fight in which Tanya Evinger won. We touched on a little bit about the fact that Chris Cyborg had uh, vacated her Invicta title, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about that Invicta FC 22 uh, card. Yes. So let's start off with uh, strawweight division, Ayaka Hamasaki versus Livia Renata Souza. This was somewhat unexpected. Uh, it was not quite the fight that I was expecting. How about you? Okay. So we're talking about the co-main event uh, on this card. And this was the card that this was the fight that I thought, man, this fight, this fight is going to have fireworks. I'm thinking like, okay, this is going to be a wire to wire battle. Nope, not at all. I I, I was I was super excited about watching uh, Hamasaki, uh, you know, put on a good performance, 
and really showcase herself and and you know establish herself as as a straw weight contender and with a you know a tough fight but I thought it's something that she would win nope not at all this was uncomfortable for me to watch because at the end I just I kept yelling that they needed to end you know there were so many strikes after she <laughs> fell and then the, you know I was like I was trying to make the ref hear me through the TV screen to stop the fight because Hamasaki was just lying there I that was one of Souza landed one of the best shots and happens I mean and Hamasaki is the Adam Waite champion on Invicta but Souza landed a shot that just put her to sleep and I mean I was so impressed by her uh she she put she applied pressure and when she landed that shot she went down Hamasaki went down and then you're right I counted 10, 11 shots where it should have been just one shot and done. But the referee just let it go, and it was one shot after the next one after the next one. I think it was like 10 shots that uh, I counted before the referee stepped in. But I tell you what, with the fact that Angela Hill has vacated uh, the strawweight title, and Souza, uh, Souza was the, the the former strawweight champion, and when she lost the title to Angela Hill, it's just m matter of fact, don't even have her fight anybody. Just give her the belt. She's <laughs> she's ready. Matter of fact, I got it in the mail. Just just give her the belt. Uh, that's how impressive she was. She knocked out the Adam Weight champion like she was not even a contender uh with that performance how can you not make her uh you know the new champ i'm looking forward to seeing who they put together but she's fighting for that title she's getting her title back oh yeah i think she would have agreed with your assessment of just you know just give me the belt she didn't say that of course because she was much more tactful but she you know you could tell she was like hi i'm back hello listen you should have went down to the post office. <laughs> should have got you a couple of stamps because the belt's kind of heavy. A couple of stamps. Got you You've a couple been to the of post office <laughs> lately. Get you a couple of stamps and just stick them on the belt and ship it. <laughs> <laughs> they say you can ship anything. You can ship yeah. a potato. You can ship Listen, that belt. Don't uh, the post office have those boxes where if, you, if it fits it's in it's there, ships. <laughs> stick that darn belt in there and put it in there head toward brazil or wherever she lives now and just deliver it and just give her the title i mean <laughs> I, I just don't even see a reason to even watch it <laughs> <laughs> well on because, that note <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> Sorry, i'm being serious I, know I you are i you know i was impressed by her before it's like she found a different gear that i mean that's not the woman that lost to angela hill uh, Olivia Sousa, she didn't, that woman that won this weekend did not fight Angela Hill. She was, she was in training somewhere else as her twin fought Angela Hill. Her twin is, uh, is, was the former champion. This is a new contender and I'm joking about her being a twin, but she was that impressive. I mean, she really, she applied pressure, nonstop pressure cut the ring off, and dropped her. Uh, and the question I have is, Hamasaki, what do you do? I mean, you just watched your your Adam Waite champion get knocked out. I mean, viciously knocked out. What do you do next with her? I mean, I think you, if I'm Hamasaki, I'm taking time off. I, you know, you, you don't, don't come back too fast. What are the big mistakes when you get knocked out like that? Especially with the fact that she's already the champ. You want to jump back in the ring and show that it was a fluke situation. That's not the norm. That would be a bad decision on Hamasaki's side. Uh, you know, and I hope her camp uh, takes good care of her and just say, you know what? 
take some time. She needs time to heal. Yes, because a lot of fighters, you feel, I mean, I used, I mean, I've fought, I'm not on this level, but if you get nailed, you know, you feel better the next day a lot of times. If not, within the, the next week, you feel better. You feel like you could take on the world, you know, within a few days. You get back into training. I don't think, uh, if, I was, if I was, I wouldn't do any sparring. I wouldn't do, I would do, I would train, but uh, as far as jumping back in the ring right away, that's, I would not do that. But, uh, man, uh, Olivia Souza uh, just really put on a, a, just an amazing performance. She goes to uh, ten and one now as a record, and and Hamasaki goes to fourteen and two. That was Hamasaki's only her second loss. That's how impressive Hamasaki has been uh, over the years. That that was only her second loss of her career, but it was in spectacular fashion. Uh, so my hats off. Cannot wait to see Olivia Souza. Uh, fight again. I will be in the front row, eyes wide open. All right, so let's move on to a fight that wasn't quite so decisive. Uh, it was a split decision, and that was also the strawweight division. That was Deanna Bennett versus Jody Escabel. Now, that was a fight. That was a good fight. Um, man, I, you know, when I, when I was watching, first off, I'm going to talk about uh, Jody. I you know I thought Jody came in in the best shape of her career. Uh, she looked like someone who was ready to start contending again, uh, and so it was uh, it was definitely uh, you know I I thought you know this is this is one of those this is that next step of getting her to starting to contend again uh, for the title. Uh, Escabel came in the first round and she got a huge takedown, uh, on Bennett. And it was, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a good fight. The last two rounds came in, I thought super close. This fight literally could go either way, but in the end, uh, I think the right, the right person won. Uh, I look forward to seeing both of these fighters. Uh, uh, Bennett drops to eight and three. Uh, Jody uh, goes to six and two. This, I mean, I look forward to seeing where these guys uh, go next. Also, with the fact, the only there was one downside of this fight, though. There's one thing I didn't like about it is the fact that uh, it was at a catch weight. This was supposed to be a straw weight battle, and you know, it had to be done at a catch weight, uh, uh, you know, and so that was kind of a, a bit of a, a disappointment, but both of these fighters are, are really, really up and coming, especially, and I'm really happy for the fact that Jody won, uh, Jody was coming off of a loss to Alexa Grasso and, uh, Alexa Grasso is, is a really tough fighter. She's now in the UFC. So it shows that uh, Jody has the ability. If she can, if she can, if she can get in the ring and, and have a tough loss with Alexa Grasso, she can definitely contend and in Invicta. So uh, that, that was a good fight. So I was excited about that, and it was fun to watch. What do we have next? What we have next is a fight that didn't happen, and that was the Jinyu Fry fight. Uh, Jinyu Fry versus uh, Janessa Morin Morindin, and I'm not sure I'm saying that right. I apologize. I was, this is what, this is why uh, when the weigh-in happened, I was kind of, the card kind of lost a little luster to me uh, initially because it made up. Once the, once the fight started, any shine that was taken off of it was buffed out and polished up and it was looking good. But I was so looking forward to seeing Jin Yu Fry fight. Uh, and then because of not being able to, uh, because of the big weight difference, uh, the fight had to be canceled. So that was, that was a little disappointing. Uh, looking forward to seeing, I don't know if they're going to reschedule that fight again, but would love to see that fight, uh, on the next Invicta card. Okay. And then we have Amber Brown versus Ashley Cummins. And that was at Adam Waite. Now there's, there's another fight that was, 
that was once again uh, a really great fight. It really, you know, two fighters that, you know, are just tough. I mean, when I think of, when I look at Amber Brown, Amber Brown is a tough, gritty fighter. And Ashley just really, you know, really just s stepped up her game. That fight started off so fast. It just felt like they were just going at it. I was I, I wasn't sure they were gonna be able to, to make it through all of their rounds because they were so fast at the beginning. You know, I agree with you. And this is one of those fights where when you look at it on paper and you say, Okay, Ashley Brown, she's a tough fighter, she's always tough, but she's coming off of two losses. And then you look at Ashley Cummings and you know, and you look at her and she's she had a she had a one win after three losses, and you know and I was just and it was her first time fighting at the one hundred five uh, weight. I tell you what, she needs the tattoo on her forehead one hundred five. <laughs> she is an atom weight. That because seems extreme. <laughs> it may be a little extreme. Maybe, what about a little tiny tattoo right about the, the hairline or something like that? Just enough that... Okay, maybe, maybe in the hair you could cover yeah, it up. Like but a like micro on tattoo. your forehead? <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe that's a little extreme. But I tell you what was extreme was her fighting skill. She looked fantastic at nice this. Nice segue. Thank you very much. I practiced that one. Nice. No. I just... <laughs> uh, Man, she looked she looked so good at this weight. It's I you know I would. She's going to be able to really start contending. I I think she's an up and comer in the Invicta, uh, you know, Adam weight class. And she if she keeps fighting like this, she will contend for a title. Amber Brown put up one of the best fights she's put up in a long time, and both these guys look fantastic. But Ashley Cummings, I can I, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens as she starts making her march through the Adam Weight division. Because anyone that signs with her is going to have their hands full. Uh, and I and I I tell you that. I good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with that, we're gonna we have a few more fights to cover on this card. We're gonna take one more quick break when we come back. We're going to cover, uh, I think there's like three or four more fights on this card. Stay tuned. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Just got done finishing talking about some of the the co-main event and a couple of other fights that was on that Invicta FC 22 card. We talked about how Livia Sosa KO'd Hamasaki by spectacular fashion. We talked about how Josie Jody Escabel and how she's you know she's really she came in in really great shape and she really put on. Uh, a really uh, great show and a very tough fighter with, Be with Bennett where she won a split decision. And then we talked about the the brand new soon to be star in the Adam Weight division where Ashley Cummings came out and put on a really great show. So we just talked about those. So, Miss Sarah. What else do we have on the on the docket? We've here? got a few more fights to cover. The first one we're going to talk about is um, Suna David's daughter versus Mallory Martin. They both came in at one and zero, so we, there's you know kind of unknown, but uh, really another really good fight. Another fight that started out just fast paced and hard to tell for me as I was watching it. 
hard to tell who was winning at any given moment. It felt like it really could have gone either way. It was a fantastic fight. And, you know, uh, looking at David's daughter, she started out really strong uh, early in the fight. She really, she rocked Martin. Uh, but then, you know, Martin rocked her a couple times later in the fight. Uh, there was, I mean, it, it was, this was a seesaw battle back and forth. I, I personally had it as a controversial decision because I actually had Martin winning two rounds to one. I gave the first round uh, to uh, Davis' daughter, uh, which is, uh, I do like that last name. It's like Suna, That's an awesome Suna last name. Davis' daughter. Uh, you know, it's like, hey, where's Tate's daughter? <laughs> well, she so, lived in Iceland. That could be a possibility. <laughs> so uh, I, I did like that, the name, but she, I mean, David's daughter is a very, she was, she came in and you could tell she took this fight serious. Her conditioning was on point. Uh, you know, she, she has, this lady has potential. I think both of these ladies have a, an impact, will have an impact in the Invicta FC ranks. Uh, it was their, it was their, you know, both fighters came in one and oh, but these fighters are well skilled. Uh, I thought I was shocked that the judge gave round two uh, to uh, Davis' daughter because they all did because it was a unanimous decision. Yes, so that, I was. Any... I was really shocked. I truly thought Martin won uh, round two, and I thought clearly she won round three. So, like I said, I had it two rounds, two rounds to to one, but. I'm looking forward to seeing these ladies because both of them, uh, this will not be the last time you see them contending. Uh, you know, because both are very high level skill. Okay, what what's next? Well, I was just going to say this is why I'm not a judge because when it's this close, when it goes back and forth like this, I would just I, – I, I personally would just want to call everything a draw. I'd be like, you guys fought so well. You both, you, you're, this I is why I'm hate, not a judge. I would hate your guts. I know you would. <laughs> Everyone would hate my guts. This is why no one will ever ask me to judge anything because I'll be like, oh, you guys are awesome. I love you all. Nope, I, <laughs> participation I say, trophies for everyone. <laughs> oh, I'm throwing you out of the studio when you say participation <laughs> trophies. Uh, Please don't throw me out of the studio. <laughs> I'll move on. I'll no, move on. Okay. Real, real quick, though, um, with this fight, who did you think won? I actually did think David's daughter won. Oh, so you did? I did. Okay. So, uh, you know, no, I, it was a it was a close fight. Um, I I didn't think round two was close. I I I not, it was they were close, but I thought there was a clear winner in round two, and it was Martin. And then I thought it was a clear winner in round three, and I thought it was Martin. So I was really shocked that it happened. But that's one of those things about sitting in your living room watching uh, watching the fight uh, instead of going, which I was so tempted to go to this one. I really wanted to go to this one. But uh, because of other obligations, I was not able to go to it. Uh, so, you know, I ended up watching it, and I really regret that. Uh Definitely got to make going to make changes where in which we're gonna the next the next uh, Invicta event uh, I expect to be at. But you won't let me go because I say things like participation trophies, huh? Yeah, it'd be. I know. Rear neck and choke. I'll stay here. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What what's next? <laughs> so next we have um, another fight where both fighters came in at one and zero. Uh, that's Cal Holiday and Miranda Maverick, and I didn't really know much about either of these fighters, but this was this was um, kind of an unexpected fight. I I didn't quite know what, like I said, what to expect going in, but I was impressed. I, you know what? I didn't know much about either one of these fighters as well, but when you when you start watching it, these ladies really. I mean, it was an, it was nonstop. Uh, action and, and Maverick just put the pressure on. Uh, she put pressure on. Uh, she grabbed. She put that arm bar on, and it was strong. And 
this fight this fight was you know it was over i mean it was a really i mean i i'm i was really impressed as a matter of fact initially i thought holiday was the one that was looking the best and then uh that arm bar happened uh and Holiday, I mean, Holiday had a, you know, had a big slam. She dropped Maverick when she had that arm bar. And she she spiked her on her head. I mean, it, her head bounced off the canvas when when she had that arm bar on. It didn't matter. Maverick had that bad boy locked in. Yeah, that, that whole, the, the, yeah, I cringed at that point. I guess it's that too was... bad this isn't on there because... Uh, on televised because Sarah has a look with, about the arm bar laying locked in and she's just cringing because, <laughs> you know, no matter, you know, uh, Holiday tried to stack. She couldn't do it. She she spiked her. That arm bar just stayed and she just kept it going. She kept it on and, and she got the win. It was, it was impressive. Once again, you have two one or no fighters with a lot of high skill and definitely looking forward to seeing both of these guys as well because I I think uh, these guys the these guys are like the future of the Invicta roster here. So uh, well, and Maverick's only nineteen. So yeah. I mean, and that's the, you know that's, that's the, the other thing, thing about Maverick is the fact that uh, she's only nineteen. Uh, I always think about her and Angela Lee as the as the two nineteen year old uh, fighters who have a huge upside. I mean, you could you could look at Maverick and say. She has 15 to 20, 15 to 18 years of fighting still in her if she really applied herself. And she's already fighting uh, at one of the highest levels, and she's winning. So uh, definitely looking forward to seeing more of her uh, and Holiday as well. Can I make a really random comment? Yes. You're not going to throw me out again, are you? Uh, you make no promises. No. Their entrance music was wrong. Holiday came in to a song from Top Gun. It was awesome. But then you've got Miranda Maverick. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm going to ignore everything you just said. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fine, I'll just move on then to the last fight we're going to talk about. What's next? We're going to be talking about their outfits didn't match. I didn't say that. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, maybe that was a little, little snarky okay. on my side. Okay. I wasn't being near. Okay. <laughs> moving on. We're moving on. <clears throat> okay, Felicia Spencer. Oh, my goodness. Felicia Spencer and Addison McElhaney, 1 0, both of them. Yes. So all three of our last fights, everyone was one and out. Well, now they're not, but you know, going yes. in, they were all one and out. So. And that's that was the nice thing about this card. Uh, you had three one and out fighters that were all very high end fighters who who put up a fantastic shows. They didn't look like oh, I they didn't know what they were doing. These guys were super competitive ready to fight in good condition uh and they all performed well um felicia spencer i saw her fight the her first fight and man she looked great and then again this fight here uh felicia spencer is just you know she she's 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 a buzz she she just like she just buzzed around that ring and she's I mean, relentless power. I, you know, I thought uh, McElhaney was going to be the bigger, stronger fighter, but the pressure came from Spencer. Spencer, Spencer has a bright future. Uh, she really, the knees, the kicks, um, she can, she can do it all. Uh, the nice takedowns, uh, just constant, constant pressure. And McElhaney just wielded under the relentless pressure. Uh, I don't think she had ever been pressed quite like that. Plus, there was some, I think, toward the end, her condition started to fail her a little bit. And when you have somebody that's a buzzsaw coming after you, you can, you, you mean, you cannot afford to have condition issues. Because I, I really felt like her condition, conditioning started to fail her. And uh, she paid for it. 
All right. So that pretty much co- no, that covers the Invicta 22 fight card. Is it me? But it's like Invicta lately has just decided that each card we're raising the bar. Each card is getting better than the next one. And and they're, Shannon and that crew are putting on amazing shows. You look at that, and and I'm still shocked that uh, the arena that they they're fighting in that they're, they're the small arena. There, sh- I seem like there should be ten times more people at these events because they're missing out. And I'm I'm so happy that uh, Invicta's on Fight Pass because they need to, they deserve to be showcased, uh, and they don't disappoint. I, I can't remember the last time I was just kind of bored or are disappointed in an Invicta card. So, uh, Invicta, keep up the good work. With that, I'm Tate. And I'm Sarah. Thank you for tuning in. We are the Golden State Media Concepts Women Mixed Martial Arts Podcast, and we'll see you at the next event. Have a good one. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's Mixed Martial Arts Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to movies music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program